Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chris, and thank you very much for having me. I hope um, you all can see my slides and see some of uh, some of the picture from the website. Perfect. Okay. So uh, Ralph, in his keynote speech, just told us how to make better decisions. But what he also told us is that good decision making needs practice and training. And I'd like to show you how you can do that. I'd like to introduce you to the Entscheidungsnavi, a decision support tool that we are developing at RWTH Aachen University in Germany. The Navi is our instrument to help people make better decisions and reach decision quality. The Navi is being continuously developed and combines well-proven concepts from decision sciences. Value-focused thinking from Ralph Keeney, for example, or multi-attribute utility theory, scenario analysis, and many more. And all of this in a freely available online tool, the link you can see here below. And every year we have hundreds of students at our university use the Entscheidungsnavi to work on their, their personal decisions. These can be um, personal decisions related to their curriculum, to potential internships, or just in general career planning. And in five steps from the decision statement over fundamental objectives, alternatives, consequence table and evaluation, the, the Entscheidungsnavi helps the students and people in general to make better decisions. So our students create, for example, for a personal decision, an objectives network, a hierarchy with the fundamental objectives on top. They assess their alternatives here on the left against the fundamental objectives. They use verbal scales or numerical scales and everything you can imagine. And they also use, for example, scenario analysis to understand, okay, what's the value contribution of the different alternatives? So they see how is the ranking of the different alternatives, how they are evaluated against the objectives. And they see, for example, what's the value contribution of my objective financial security as one example. And what they also can see is if I rate, for example, financial attractiveness a bit lower, so it's not that important to me, how would that change the ranking? So if, for example, financial security is not that important to me, maybe another alternative would rank on top. Or what they could also do is they can work with influence factors, so uncertainties, and see, so for example, we had one alternative here, it was about investing in a startup and um, yeah, founding a startup, and we had an uncertainty around will the startup really be successful? And if we change the probabilities here and say, okay, it's very likely that it's successful, then we see, okay, the startup will rank on top. However, it's an uncertainty, and with the probabilities that the student has provided, it's rather on the fourth ranking. So the typical feedback that we receive from our students is how much clarity they win just by reflecting about their own preferences, creating a structure of their decision with their tool. And every year, the student's feedback helps us to further improve the Navi. Our current ambition is to spread the word of decision quality and decision competence beyond our university. And next Sunday, the federal elections in Germany are coming up. And I mean, what is a better point in time to work on decision competence and help people make better decisions than when, when an election is coming up? So about a year ago, we decided to offer something new to help people reflect on their, pot, uh, their political opinion. And there are already some tools out there. And maybe you've also used them in, in the past. These are tools that ask you a couple of simple questions, like, do you want to increase taxes? Yes or no. Do you want to change current compensations for hospitals? Yes, no. And after you've answered them, the tool tells you basically how to vote. But I don't know about you, but all, always when I do these, uh, these uh, tools, I always tend to answer these questions with like, well, it depends. I don't know what's the alternatives. What are the objectives? So I'm not really satisfied with the current options. 
So we thought, okay, let's provide something different. We are teaching value-focused thinking, for example. We are developing decision support tools. So we thought, okay, let's build something new. So we came up with the Navi Partein Check, so the party check, something to help people reflect on their, uh, their political opinion. And we started with thinking about a set of fundamental objectives that would describe the different objectives of the parties, so a general set for all of them, but where we thought, okay, the parties would probably trade them off differently. So something of the, uh, the value of the power of the wording is being lost by the translation, but I just try to give you an understanding of what we mean with that. So equal opportunities is that everyone has the same basic chances in life. So for example, with regard to healthcare or education. Second one is about justice of performance. So the, the harder you work, the more you get out is the basic idea of that. Then we have self-determination. So how much the state regulates the market, companies, people. Then we have environmental protection, which probably speaks for its own and international responsibility. So to what extent are we willing to commit our personal resources to take on international responsibility? And this whole application is just a direct rating. And we are very much aware of the potential biases and distortions with, uh, with direct rain, uh, ratings. However, our first experience with trying that out, even with experienced consultants and decision pro uh, professionals is very positive because their initial reaction is, I can't trade them off. They are all important. But then the more they think about this and the more they reflect, they can come up with some weights for their objectives. So it sparks some new ideas. And for example, it could, could turn out like this, where we have a high weight on environmental protection and a lower weight on the others, lowest weight on equal, equal opportunities. But for sure, we wanted to provide something more, something more than just a tool to reflect on, on uh, the put, uh, personal opinion and just rates uh, these obje uh, objectives. So we started to reach out to politicians to ask politicians for their objectives weights. And indeed, we got some interviews with politicians, but you have no idea how hard it is to get a politician to commit to concrete numbers and weights for these objectives. So we had to ask our students to help us. And we asked our students to work through the different parties' election programs identify all of their different initiatives, categorize them into the different objectives, and calculate relative weighting of these initiatives regarding these objectives. So the evaluation that we offer in the end is a ranking of the different parties and how their objective weights fit with your assessment. So on top, we have the Greens, the second one would be the Liberals, and afterwards we had uh, Conservatives. But this is not a recommendation to vote this party. I can't highlight this enough because things like integrity, competence, tactical or co coalition considerations, they are all out of scope. However, it is food for thought. It's food for reflection. It offers a different perspective to think about the personal vote. And it's something that gets people interested in decision sciences and decision competence. And in recent time, we've also got some traction in the media. In German media, on RTL, for example, um, this is one of Germany's biggest TV channels, and they launched the tool on their website. You see the party check down below. And just with Google Translate, you can see, okay, the CDU, SPD, or Greens. So there was an article about that. And in the end, they linked our tool with that website and we had tens of thousands of people analyzing their political opinion. I think the last time I checked, we had 60,000 people using value-focused thinking, reflecting on their political opinion, and hopefully reach some more decision quality. And with this, I would like to encourage you to give it a try, visit the website, see it for yourself, train your decision competence. You can use the link below. And if you have uh, some feedback, please share it with us. We're continuously trying to improve the tool to help people make better decisions. And with this, back to you, Chris.